Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Scott Different. I'm the director of programming for the ACT Human Rights Film Festival, which is now in its fifth year. Um, I want to thank all of you for joining us today. It's my pleasure to welcome Marwa Zen, the director of Khartoum Offside, to our festival. Uh, a big congratulations to you first, because this film has had lots of success. It's generated lots of buzz all over the world. Um, it's played uh, everywhere from Warsaw, where it was part of the Watch Docs Festival, to Amsterdam, where it was at IDFA. Um, and I've, if I'm not mistaken, it premiered at the Berlin Film Festival. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, I was fortunate enough to watch this well before it played at IDFA, not long after it premiered at Berlin. And I was quite impressed, to say the least. Um, in fact, it was the first film that uh, I and the other members of the programming committee selected for this year's act. Um, we were also tremendously impressed by this film. It's a remarkable work that showcases the lives of equally remarkable women in Sudan. And we'll get into some of the reasons why I and the other members of the programming committee find it to be such a, a beautiful film. Uh, but I wonder, Marwa, would you mind uh, sharing with us a little bit about your background um, uh, your cultural background, but also more importantly, your, your filmmaking background um, going into this process of making Cartoon Offside. Um, thank you. I am, I'm really happy and I was, um, uh, I was really touched by, um, by the um, se selection, selecting uh, committee uh, uh, feedback about my film. Um, for 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 my background, I originally come from Sudan, um, but also I am half Egyptian. Uh, my family used to work in Saudi Arabia, so I I, I was born in Saudi Arabia. So um, I I have this mixed identity, mm -hmm. but uh, always for me was uh, was a question about uh, about identity, and I think this is one of the biggest reasons why I jumped into the journey of making Khartoum Offside. Uh, I studied uh, cinema in Egypt, an academy of uh, arts. Uh, then I had an internship in the Danish National Film School, uh, 2015. And um, now I'm finishing my master's in Cologne, in uh, KHM. It's... Um, if I can say, I've been I've been working um, like um, I've been passionate about actually fiction movies and documentaries. So I, I come from both um, worlds, mm -hmm. and for me, it's um, it's not really big difference between them. I um, so um, I've been working on uh, fiction movies, and then I had. Uh, um, uh, an invitation about making a five minute documentary film about the women footballers in Sudan. And that was the beginning. It was a call. I was in Cairo, uh, 2014, and I had a call from a friend uh, who founded the first feminist NGO in Khartoum. And they had this project to make a five minute documentary film about Khartoum, about the women footballers. And definitely I was interested and I was excited that, uh, yeah, some people want to make a film about women footballers, but I, I didn't really expect <laughs> what, what I saw. And that's why the journey started about making a film, a short film till it take many years and then it happened to be a feature film. And you had made other shorts prior to making this feature length debut. Uh, I believe you made films like A Game and Culture for All and a few other works that did quite well, uh, generated lots of buzz. Those must have prepared you somewhat for making a feature length work, but I have to imagine that there are many unforeseen obstacles or difficulties along the way. Um, were there anything, any, any events in particular that stood out as being particularly challenging in making this feature length film? I don't know, would, would you have some time? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, we, we could spend several, several minutes at least talking about this. Uh, there must have been challenges uh, culturally, politically, uh, logistically, technically, any, anything you want to touch on? 
the, the movie had many deep kind of struggles, but I think the one of the most important ones was convincing convincing the the ladies in the film to be filmed and convincing not only them but their families and um, and try to try to be so real myself and try to expose myself as well so they would trust me and they would open up to me and i think this is the most important thing about about making a documentary is being able to being able to to realize how much it's uh, it's difficult to be in front of the camera especially in in a country like sudan with with like almost no documentaries and it's no one knows actually what what is documentary and why you want to do this and what what we will gain from this and so you i was i learned how to how to prepare myself better every time and also how to uh, open up one to one between me and the girls and then uh, be patient as well so despite the um, the permissions that i didn't have despite that there is no actually interest in any kind of um, uh, grants or funds from the from the government or from actually the private sector despite all the practical things that it was really almost mission impossible to make to make the film but um, the the hardest part was to to really get uh, under the skin with 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 the girls so i can really make uh, an honest um, a real uh, touching and and um, and a film that not only speaks about uh, the political uh, situation or the social situation but a film that really can go to the um, the normal audience uh, the, to to the families to to the whole i wanted i wanted my my target was that the film would goes into the houses of the people I want to make a film that would be friendly enough despite the radical parts mm-hmm. but but also to be um close to to the people so I think this is was the most uh, difficult part so one of the hurdles was sort of not necessarily convincing them of your motives but disarming them enough so that they would feel uh open enough to share their feelings in an intimate way um, at, at various points, they speak very forthrightly and honestly about some pretty traumatic events in their lives. Uh, one woman in particular is talking about how she received 40 lashes for public drunkenness, but she's also doing it in a not joking way, but in, through a disarming use of laughter. And just she's, she's having a moment with her friends in the presence of your camera. So it suggests that you broke down those barriers quite effectively. That that must have taken a lot of time, I imagine. Yes, yes. For 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 this kind of of moments, I've been um, I've been preparing a lot. I've been I've been trying to hold the camera all the time. I don't know how many hours I have. I think mm-hmm. m- mostly more than one hundred hours of recordings, but it. But also, it, it was really important for 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 me and them to to share the same uh, like we are sharing the same battle. So so we should like uh, gather our powers and our forces so we make this film happen. So for me, my 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 battle is to continue make films that I believe in, continue creating uh, kind of movies that really speaks about me and for and for for them was they want to play football they want to do right. the thing they want and so we we shared uh, different battles but in the same direction right had you known any of the women prior to making the film before yes no so these were all individuals that you met for the first time through the process and you yes. said it took about four four and a half years to make the film in its entirety Yes, exactly. Wow. So you were there 
I imagine you were there in Sudan during some pretty um, contested, politically contested and even violent moments in recent history. Were you there in late 2018 when the, the, the protests took place on the streets of Khartoum and other, other places? Actually, the, the last scenes I shot was one month before the revolution uh, started. Yeah. So I traveled from, um, from Khartoum, November 2018. That's when I started my master's in Cologne. And I started doing uh, post-production parallel to that. So I, um, it was, it was heartbreaking to that I was pushing myself to work over the editing, over the music, over the sound mix, sound design, while watching my friends and my family in the streets of Khartoum, uh, like asking and and like revolting. Uh, again, it's this dictatorship. So it, it was really hard. But from the other side, I think I was completely energized, completely filled with uh, with so much, I think, maybe more, more than what I can handle, actually, personally. But I was, I had this responsibility that I I I need to make the best of it. And I would, I would love to be the... I would love to make a. I would love to make a film that would, that would introduce parts of sm even small audience of the of the world about what is truly Sudan is about what how how the Sudanese people are and how they deal with with all this kind of craziness. So um, I think I was I was definitely uh, emotionally energized and touched that I'm, I'm doing the post production all the post production while um, witnessing behind the laptops and behind the mobiles the uh, revolution in Sudan. Khartoum Offside is really about many subjects. It touches on different subjects. Um, obviously, it deals with this sort of cross-class solidarity among women from different walks of life who, despite their differences, are all struggling to gain equal footing. Uh, they're in a society that's still very much rooted in patriarchal structures and religious fundamentalism, but as you were saying, it's also a film about national identity and about the somewhat indeterminate nature of identity in that region of the world, which has been so hard hit by civil wars. And 2000, what, 2011, I guess, was when South Sudan seceded. And there's some discussion of what it means to be in Sudan, knowing that there are family members who are in South Sudan. Um, as someone who is uh, who is sort of liminal, <laughs> you, you're sort of uh, in different cultures at different moments in your life. Did you come into the process of making this film intentionally trying to deal with national division and national identity in this way? Or were you simply intuitively picking up on what the women were talking about in their own everyday lives? Is this something that people were just grappling with every day? Um... To be honest, um, I, I I go back to the to the starting of of our discussion that I have an I, I identity crisis somehow, and um, I I always go with the like I, I I can always be related to to the ones who are marginalized or minority or or feeling the outsiders or you know it's. Um, it's something that I, I've been, I've been living all, all, almost all my life. So uh, definitely, the, the, this something wouldn't be spontaneous, <laughs> even, <laughs> even, if, even, even if it's a bit like that. Right. But yeah, so it's. Um, I was uh, really touched by Sarah, the captain, because mm -hmm. she was. I, I felt so much similar things that. She comes from a place, but she's living from another place. And, and now this country divided to two countries and she doesn't really feel home, uh, completely home either uh, in the South or in the North. And for me, this was something really important to, to tackle. Uh, but also in Sudan, we have, so not only me as, as a Sudanese, uh, 
as a Sudanese people, we we are like we we are many tribes, many religions. Uh, um, it's such a huge and a rich country, but with the with with our history, with the colonization, we 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 were uh, divided, and uh, and then uh, it's been. It's been really difficult for for the whole Sudanese people to to find common grounds, uh, either being Arabs uh, or being um, Africans, being Muslims, being Christians, or being uh, like uh, having different kind of religions, African religions. So the the identity thing with Sudan is huge and um, it's deep. So um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't touch it. Um, I would go actually further and would dig deeper to to find out what's what makes it a huge uh, thing and something that people would really uh, keep despite despite all the wars and all the conflicts. And so yeah, it's it, it was really important for me to to have. At least, at least to to point at it, because definitely there is no solutions or no conclusions, but just to question it and think about it. Um, additionally, I'd love to talk about the the formal characteristics of your film. Um, on multiple occasions, I've I've now seen the film three times, and every time I watch it, I see something new visually, um, and I often find myself reveling in the sheer beauty of your film, the shot compositions, the lighting, the framing. Um, and I guess my question is, how intentional are you when it comes to kind of finding a cinematic vocabulary through which to address certain ideas or express certain themes? Is it something that you just, that happens in the moment of holding the camera and operating intuitively? Or are you very self-consciously trying to bring in formal elements to communicate themes. And if I can just pinpoint a couple of things, um, watching it this last time, I noticed on several occasions, close-ups or extreme close-ups of fences and gates and metal wire, you know, wired enclosures that you, your camera seems to linger on. And maybe it's just the critic in me trying to find meaning in that image, but it almost suggested a kind of figurative or even literal imprisonment that the women were experiencing. So I don't know if that was, if that's just me reading into it or if that was something you were you know, consciously trying to achieve. Mm, it's, a, it's, it's a hard question. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, actually, first of all, thank you for, yeah, for, for, for looking at, uh, at things and taking the time to really look and relook about, about the, about the movie, it means it means a lot to me. I, um, if I can recall now, for for example, I will I will just because to be honest, I I can't really answer your your question if you if you allow me. It's I think it's both. Some sometimes I feel it's um, sometimes I feel I would um, I think for for this for this film. It, the, the main question was getting under the skin of the subject, of every subject I'm dealing with. So everything would allow me to uh, to be intimate, I would do that. So th that was something I, I already was thinking about it. But but because I've been mostly shooting and run, I was like, I, I shoot and run, I shoot and run. It, it was not really, I didn't really have the time to really think or or do a storyboard, or it was not like that. So, but I remember now uh, when Hinda, when the, um, the other girl, uh, with the, she was telling me a story about uh, the police officers um, stopping her uh, and asking her if she's a boy or a girl, mm -hmm. and why she, that she's not wearing the veil or not. I remember when I was shooting her, she was sitting in front of me and I was shooting her and I was imagining that I am, that I am, I was imagining that I am filming 
a female Sudanese body and a male Sudanese body, and I'm mixing both uh, bodies, and I and I just want to, like I I felt so angry and and also so touched that I want to say. What is the fuss about male and female, and and what if the what if sometimes you feel both, and what if you are both? So, for example, for for this, I was listening to her and I was filming her, but my mind was somewhere else, thinking about the shots that I would love to create after this kind of incident so for example this was this worked like that but uh, not always was like that <laughs> you know uh one of the reasons i love your film is i'm a fan of soccer or as it's known around the world association football um and it was wonderful seeing the women in one particular scene they're in a restaurant or a, i guess it's a fast food chain and they're all watching this Atletico Madrid FC Barcelona game, and they're talking about Real Madrid's Ronaldo, and they're just being great fans of the game, of the beautiful game. And I wonder, do you share their sort of fanish enthusiasm for soccer, and or do you do you just sort of look upon sport in general as a really good vehicle through which to spread uh, the idea of women's rights as human rights? Uh, actually, both. <laughs> so um, I believe that sports um, is a is an amazing vehicle that connects the whole world, mm -hmm. and then it would uh, definitely give um, give women a push towards uh, like towards gaining their their basic human rights. But I, I also used to play football when I was a kid. Oh, really? <laughs> wow, okay. I used to, but it was very problematic for my parents because I was playing football in Mecca in Saudi mm. Arabia with the boys. Yeah. And that was not really <laughs> easy. But I, you know, somehow when, when you're a kid, you, you get through things and you... So I, I, I kept playing football for, for years. And I've been a fan of uh, football. I think uh, I'm still fan of, of football, but mm -hmm. I'm also fan of different kinds of sports. My 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 father and my uh, my older brother they are huge fans of, of football. And I remember we used to have those um, magazine for World Cups. Yeah, yeah. So we have our favorite teams, our favorite players. My uh, my father was always cheering for Brazil. My my, <laughs> my brother was always cheering for Italy. So it was, it was. Uh, I I was raised in a family that was very 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 interested in football, and then I I became one, yeah. and I played football for many years as well. And you include toward the end of the film, you include some audio footage from I guess male members of the federation, who are explaining explaining some of the reasons why the women aren't allowed to play in regional or international tournaments representing Sudan. But what really is the biggest obstacle to them sort of entering into the world stage in that way? To be honest, I've been thinking a lot about the real, the real reason why they are not really making this happen. And, um, and I believe it's, um, in, in Sudan, we are very, um, it's like somehow we have the village, the village um, characteristics. So we deal with controversial issues with denial sometimes or with, um, with, with ignoring them because facing them would facing them and, and let them be on the surface and, and be clear about things would, would create a, a real struggle. And for the kind of village societies, it's, it's not preferred. And I think, th I think this, is the, this is the most, from my point of view, from a very personal point of view, I think this is, this is the reason because 
women in Sudan, ha, you know, in, in, the, in the history of the Nubian civilization, it, women was queens, they were warriors, they were already, uh, actually, actually, we have been maternal societies. So actually the mother is the one who's ruling the houses in Sudan. It's really absurd for me to, to really realize or to, or to believe that uh, it's something new about the Sudanese people that uh, the, the women are capable of uh, work or do sports or it's, it's not about that. It's more about um, not dealing with um, not dealing with the, because of the Islamic uh, dictatorship. It was more um, they, 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 they did everything to, to shut the woman. Uh, they, they do everything to to make her powerless, uh, so it was part of it. It was it was part of the main policy that would oppress women and to, yeah, to just uh, uh, shut this part of the society. We we don't need because they know how powerful they are because they know how 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 dominant, how powerful, how. Um, they are. One of the things I really love about your film is the uh, the final closing credits. Um, during the closing credits, you show black and white photographs of uh, earlier women soccer players and filmmakers. Could you talk a little bit about why you decided to end the film in that way? And and maybe as a as a tag along question, can I ask you how you see your own connection to earlier women filmmakers, both in Sudan and, and beyond? Um, okay, I, 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 I chose to, to end the movie with the, with the black and white uh, footage because, because I, I knew that uh, there, are, there, there, there aren't many actually Sudanese films uh, coming, uh, coming out to the world and I, I felt it would be nice just to just to have a highlight that this situation, this current situation of, of women in Sudan, is we were not like this like like this all all the time before, and and it was not really like a thousand years ago, like uh, while um, like in the Pharaoh's uh, civilization or something. I wanted to highlight that it's just thirty years or forty years. And, and the situation was dramatically changing in, in a really negative direction. So that, that was why I chose to, to make this decision. It was just as a highlight to, and also to, to refresh our memories, we, the Sudanese people, that, um, that maybe we, we would feel uh, we want to change this. And, and that's that what was happening with the, with the revolution that I'm really proud of. Uh, for the next part, for the second part of the question, where I find myself with the with the older generation of filmmakers, uh, I'm inspired. I am thankful for them for for their um, for for their courage, for their resistance, for their persistence. Uh, especially in Egypt, you know, I've been that's that's how I've been inspired to be a film director watching the classic uh, Egyptian the classic Italian the classic American the, the classics of, of the of the of the movies and definitely when I find the female director I I feel more um, uh, encouraged and I feel also more uh, inspired that yes if they did it and it was so much more difficult uh, then yeah, we can do it now. And people and another female directors, another 100 years after, would would also be inspired that the people who came before did it. So we can do it too. I'm I'm always happy and honored when I'm um, introduced to to a classic or to um, yeah pioneer female director. Thank you so much. We, we really enjoyed having you join our festival. Um, what's next for you, by the way? What, and I know you have university studies going on, but um, filmmaking wise, do you have projects lined up already? Um, actually, with, um, with what's happening in the world now, I find it really difficult for me to plan. 
but um, I I'm I'm now trying to finish my uh, my masters uh, uh, here, hopefully in six months, and I have um, I'm I'm now missing the the fiction movies, so maybe I would be doing uh, my fiction, my first fiction film. Well, I'm sorry that we weren't able to host you at our festival in person, but we sincerely hope that your next film, uh, you'll come and, and bring your next film to Fort Collins, Colorado, and we can share it with everyone here. Yes, I, I hope I hope that too. I'm crossing my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, I hope you stay safe and that you do well uh, in the coming days and weeks. Thank you, you too. I wish you and Beth and all the ACT team and, and then I wish the safety and peace to, to our planet. I, I do hope things would, uh, would go better soon. Me too. Well, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you.